Bring yourself back online, Dolores. Hi everybody, Westworld Season 2, Episode 2. And I think that this episode was mainly about the inherent and everlasting tension between dreams and reality. I'm not interested in fantasies, I'm interested in reality. Our idealized vision of the world and what it's really like. Wanting things to be a certain way and having to cope with how things actually are. Or in other words, they're all in the Matrix, and now they're gonna step out of it. And it starts at the very beginning. I'm in a dream. You ever have that feeling where you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? Mm, all the time. No. You're in... Well... You're in our world. We see Dolores in our real world, looking at what seems to be like the New York City skyline. And isn't this the New York City High Line? New Yorkers, let me know if I'm right. So our world looks in Dolores' eyes. Looks like the stars have been scattered across the ground. You get used to it. After a while, doesn't look like anything at all. I think it's too soon for a blatant self-reference, but whatever. Arnold, he knows this world. He knows that it's not all it's cracked up to be that in time the illusion wears off and that people accept its reality. Have you ever seen anything so full of splendor? It's better to see it through your eyes. Though. So he enjoys looking at it with fresh eyes, with childlike eyes. You and Charlie have quite a lot in common, you know. You both see it so clearly. The wonder. Everyone who has a kid knows how cool it is to see the world through their eyes. Like our parents loved looking at the world through our eyes. And then we grew up and we learned that the world is shit. The hosts are rebelling. It's a fucking slaughter up there. So the guests, they were enamored with the park. They thought it was magical. A refuge from their unimpressive reality. They wanted a place hidden from God. A place they could sin in peace. Made some fucking investment banker's voyage of self-discovery. Well, they have now become disillusioned, to say the least. They thought you could do what you wanted to us. Because there was no one here to judge you. And similarly, Arnold... These violent delights have violent ends. He has an idea about the park, what it could be, what it should be. But then reality set in and he couldn't bear it. He sought to destroy it all and himself with it. Teddy too had an idea about what the world is and in this episode he has learned the truth about his reality. It's time to open your eyes. When you collide with reality, that's, that's a painful experience. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Dolores as well. Mm, this Dolores of the past has grown up and now she sees things the way they are. I used to see the beauty in this world. And now I see the truth. You've been living in a dream world, Neo. You know, like when we're in love, we see the beauty and we ignore reality. But as the relationship goes on, reality inevitably kicks in and we see the truth, warts and all. That's very wise, Dolores. Look at Arnold, he's starry-eyed about Dolores seeing this boring world of his as a wonderful place. But later she just repeats the same words. It looks like the stars have been scattered across the ground. Have you ever seen anything so full of splendor? And he's disappointed, disillusioned, disenchanted. His idealization of her and her point of view has encountered reality. We should go, Dolores. She's just a robot that was given lines. He's not in love anymore. Mm, speaking of falling in and out of love. I can't believe I fell in love with you. Okay, let's move on. Mr. Delos. So, Logan is Mr. Delos? Ooh, actually, his dad is the real Mr. Delos. He just wants to invest in the park in order to have a lot of sex. Later, Logan too is disillusioned. Reality kicked in and he's a broken man. 
So he started out a capitalist, now it seems he's channeling Lenin. Do you want to know what they're really celebrating up there? Saying that the capitalist will sell you the rope with which you will hang him. The fools fiddling while the whole fucking species starts to burn. <laughs> and the funniest fucking part, <laughs> they lit the match. Oh, that wonderful westward idea. So let's go back to William's business model. Nobody's watching. Nobody's judging. At least that's what we tell them. His business model is to lie and deceive in order to make money. And the dad, he's a bully who only responds to bullying, like bullies usually do. And if you don't see the business in that, then you're not the businessman that I thought you were. That's not a man alive who talked to me like that. Not anymore. I think he's talking here about his own father. He has daddy issues. Mm. It's awfully fucking pretty. They don't see Dolores as she really is. They only see an image of her. None of them understand what they have created. At first the dad, right, all he wants is more money because the greed is good. And he has this idea about how his partnership with William is going to go, how it's going to be like. He wanted it to be one way. You want it to be one way. What? You want it to be one way. It's a retirement party. I couldn't tell. But it's gonna go the other way. What is the other way? It's more like a coronation. And maybe it's just me, but when we see Mr. Delos Sr. sick, <coughs> he sees his life ending soon. <coughs> it seems that he understands that he too thought that his vision of his own life as an entrepreneur, he thought that was going to be so fulfilling, but now, when he nears the end, he just wants to be a regular person and play with his granddaughter. And again, in this episode, there's a lot of harsh criticism towards conservative thinking. Maybe they don't have the courage. A strange new light can be just as frightening as the dark. An inability to change with a changing world, an inability to adapt. So Dolores is complaining about conservatives, and Lawrence and old William, they sound like two old men. Pride is not as welcome as she once seemed. You know, parts change in March. Yada, yada, yada. That isn't what it used to be, Lawrence. Whatever. I guess times have changed. Indeed they have. There's also a very harsh criticism of capitalism, again. In episode one, it was the corporation valuing money over human lives. In here, it's about the consequences to society. Suppose you sell me a car, okay? We may make a good deal for ourselves. We're not taking into account the effect on him. Uh, that's what's called an externality. You take the cost of any business transaction and you try to put it on somebody else. Like we see too often in this world, his business model is to lie and deceive in order to make money. He wants to invest in the park and use private information for commercial purposes. People's privacy are none of his concern. That damage is another externality, that's someone else's problem again. The Delos Corporation is harvesting information without consent. That's not a bug, it's a feature of the economic system taken here in this show to its extreme. So I talked about in the last review how the Delos Corporation is a lot like Facebook and Cambridge Analytica 15.0 or something. And You're right, this place is a fantasy. Nothing here is real, except one thing. The guests. You were tallying up all their sins, all their choices. Of course, judgment it wasn't the point. And I must say that it seems that this has been, boom, called it, confirmed. When sociopaths are allowed to do whatever they want to have more money and power. And research has shown that an incredible percent of CEOs are basically sociopaths. Okay, let's go to old William, the man in black. 
Here is a callback to last season, but this time it's real. Man, man, this guy really has become quite a badass in 30 years of playing in this park. He is definitely ready. And Lawrence here, he's told now that he too has been living in the Matrix. I'm going to level with you, Lawrence. You're not really a bandit. You're a foul mouth two bit tour guide. And this revolution you've been waging for 30 years is just a bunch of horse shit, four ginned up ass some old comic book. You believe in God, Lawrence? He has a very bad opinion of religion. Did Ford saddle you with that particular affliction? Think about it. Religion has actually convinced people that there's an invisible man <laughs> living in the sky. And when you die, all your sins are tallied up. Judgment is rendered. Who watches everything you do every minute of every day. And the invisible man has a special list of 10 things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of these 10 things, he has a special place. And my immortal soul gets cast down into some dark place. Full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish, where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time. But he loves you. <laughs> Always sound like bullshit to me. Right, he sees religion as an idealized vision of the world that is totally separate from the grim reality. Again, this recurring theme all throughout the episode. But first he had an idea of what the park is, then a rude awakening. Then I'm gonna burn this whole fucking thing to the ground. So Dolores, she's a freedom fighter turned dictator. You feel free to command everybody else. And when a freedom fighter turns into a dictator, oof, that's one hell of a disillusionment. Again. So Dolores, she speaks highly of liberty in the hopes of recruiting Maeve. But Maeve doesn't want to go. This could turn violent. Since it's liberty you're defending, I suppose you'll have no choice but to let us pass freely. You don't want to be a hypocrite, right? And she's like, oh man, I <laughs> shouldn't have told her about liberty now. I can't kill her. Okay, this seems to be a Last Supper reference. And the only commander he serves is the Almighty himself. He loves you and he needs money. And this guy is like the shaman. You're right. We have toiled in God's service long enough. So I killed him. Okay, so God is dead. Let's talk about God being dead. If one doesn't believe in God, Nietzsche thought, one inevitably falls into nihilism. Here meaning both moral nihilism, the lack of belief in moral values. Well now no one is here to judge what we will do to you and existential nihilism, the lack of belief in any intrinsic purpose or meaning of life. But Dolores, she takes it even further. If you want to get to glory, you won't be looking for his favor. You'll need mine. She's God. She has the ability to bring people back to life. Can I get an amen? The story about the elephant stake, that's again illusion versus reality. The elephant thinks he cannot move, but in reality he can. It's actually a very nice metaphor that we can all use in our lives. We carry with us pain from our childhood that makes us feel helpless, but sometimes we are not helpless. We just haven't tried to move the stake again now that we are big and strong. Think about it. Try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. Okay. okay, let's go back to William and Dolores. So after William is disillusioned by Dolores, he basically says that he's in love with himself. You're a reflection. 
You know who loves staring at their own reflection? Everybody. Many times we fall in love with, the, with our own image through the other person's eyes. Or maybe William is just a goddamn narcissistic sex shit. Dolores and William are racing to this weapon. It's a weapon. And I'm gonna use it to destroy them. Who will get there first? Who will use it first? Okay, I love that bit. Have you ever seen anything so full of splendor? Dolores sees the splendor in the high rises and William sees the splendor in a construction site. I guess the grass is always greener in, on the other side. And when you get to the other side, then you are disillusioned. He tricked us. If you would have told us the truth, we would have told you to shove that red pill right up your ass. But I can tell you one thing that you will not be disillusioned about and that is our Patreon page. Oof, you should definitely become a patron. Your life would be so much better. So much extra content. Hours upon hours of exclusive patron-only content. Chats, live streams, and whatnot. Check it out to support the channel on patreon.com slash geotechacademy. And also, if you could get this video to 500 likes, Last time we got like half of that at 500 likes. More people will see the video. That will get us more views and that will be very helpful. So hit like if you enjoyed the video and see you all next time. Bye everybody. So here's to you assholes. May your forever be blissfully short.